Okay, and recording has started. And oh, we have Melissa Marsh, who's my Reeve in um, Bo. Rowney? Well, well, we did yeah, Rowney, but yeah, it's more specifically so. Hey, um, Shinjo, how you doing? Hi. Um, just so you're aware, we are recording this session. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, Okay, so welcome to Ask the Exchequer Australia version. And the reason why I say Australia version is because I'm going to do the New Zealand version um, in January with my New Zealand deputy. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Baron Thomas Backus for coming tonight. He is my Australian um, deputy and... Uh, somewhat drop dead deputy if I fall over, but you know, let's hope that never, that doesn't happen. No, no, no. He's, it was a joke, Bacchus. No, no dropping. You were, you are doing a fine job, and I want to see you continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'll be uh, I'll be uh, referring back to Bacchus. Bacchus has been um, exchequer before. Um, it's why I wanted him here, and it's why he was uh, made my drop dead deputy when I had some issues in the year. Um, so anyway, welcome. And um, so my reason, my reason for running this um, session is I want to demystify the whole read exchequer business. I want to show just how simple it is how it's not hard and complicated and you don't have to be fantastic at maths to do it because we've got programs that will do the adding up for you and um it's it's not hard it's it, it's actually more hurting cats isn't it i guess yeah it's more kind of sort of training the people that that are managed to be barren, who have some financial implications, financial roles like stewards, how to do their jobs well. Um, and that makes your job a stack easier. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's have a look. Um, we don't have, I'll come to the, um, the Reeves handbook later, but we don't actually have a Reeves handbook to go off. We are curiously trying to get one together and Bacchus will talk about that later in the meeting. Um, uh, but so in lieu of that, there are a couple of resources that we draw our information from. Um, now I'm gonna share my screen for a second. Um, and um i'm going to show you we have a lovely lockhart reeves website now it doesn't have it's not exhaustive in its information but it has all of the basic duties um of an australian reeve um so start off with um uh, okay i can't apparently i can't click on on it it's just Okay, so you know, it says welcome to the Reeves website. The Reeves of Lockhart are charged with maintaining the finances and assets of their groups. They are the chief financial officer for their group. The Exchequer, uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer is the Kingdom Officer in charge of Lockhart Reeves. There is a Deputy Chancellor of the Exchequer that presides in the country, Australia or New Zealand, that the Chancellor of the Exchequer doesn't reside, and that's currently New Zealand. Um, and uh, Reeves, like all officers, must be current SCA members. If their membership lapses, so does their status as an officer. They should have access to reliable internet um, to access things like Dropbox, Zero, and um, Reeves may also, uh, well, Reeves also need to be the signature on the bank account. So all fairly straightforward stuff. I'll cover what Dropbox and, and Zero is a little bit later. Um, but the big important thing I want to concentrate on is this sentence here. Can you all see it? Um, Reeves, they are the chief 
financial officer of the group. Um, now, this is the scary thing. This is why people are scared of being regs, I think. Um, but what that means is you need to be involved with the financial decisions. You need to know what's going on. And if you're not comfortable, you don't do that transaction. And then you pass it up the line. And if eventually it comes to me, I'll make a decision. Um, but if you're not comfortable, it doesn't happen. It's that simple. Um, that's, that's the job as a Reeve. You have that power. Use it sparingly. Most things are non-controversial, but occasionally you do get some issues. Um, okay. So... I'll go through the, the regular duties of a REEVE. Um, so in Australia, um, regular duties of a REEVE, uh, maintaining the finances and assets of their group. I'm reading all of this directly from the website just to show you that this is where you can get the information. Um, not because I can't remember the information, but just because it's an easy format. Um, maintaining the finances and assets of their group. All financial transactions should go through them or their deputy if they have one. Um, so every month they'll need to reconcile zero. I'll cover zero in a bit um, for previous months. Um, uploading receipts or invoices um, for any expense transactions. Upload to Dropbox meeting minutes for the previous month or a note explaining if there was no meeting. Draft minutes are fine. Um, upload to uh hang on we've got new person joining i'm not sure ah, haven't quite come in yet um okay so where was i um upload to dropbox any and all signing sheets and event reports hello kimberly um just so you're aware this is being recorded Great, thanks for letting me know. Um, yeah, uh, reports are required for any garbed event where a fee is paid and non-member insurance is not considered a fee. Um, every three months, they need to submit a quarterly report. Every year, they need to submit, as well as a quarterly report, a doomsday report. Now, there are Google Forms for both of those, so it's just follow the bouncing ball, answer the questions. And it's really easy to get the information. And if you get stuck, we're here to help you. This is, if I want to impart one bit of information, I want to say that the Reeves are a team and we help each other and I will bend over backwards for my Reeves. It's the way I see my job as the Kingdom Officer. Um, Every year, you need to review the assets. That's just for items costing $300 or more. Um, it, you, you'll be required to do monthly reports for your local council, assuming your council meets monthly. Um, and as required by, and, and tasks as required by myself, my deputy, or possibly your senator. So that's the basic duties of um, an Australian Reef. I might just stop for questions now and see if anybody's got any questions. Yeah. Um, my, my quick question. There doesn't seem to be much, well, more statement, I think, much difference between, say, a treasurer for a non-profit organisation or being a reeve for for the local shire or um no there, there really isn't um you just have to be financially accountable yeah um uh it's 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 not that hard a job it really isn't and you'll have lots and lots of support um hey Jochen, we are just so you know we are recording this session Okay. Um, oh. Um. Uh, the, the thing with treasurer, um, putting if you want to put being reeve on your on your resume, maybe putting treasurer probably people would understand that more. 
Yeah, that's just like because breathing the treasurer. That's fine if you. It, it is a good thing for your CV if you're trying to pad out your CV, but that's not why I'm doing it. Um, I'm doing it because I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, just ask Bacchus. He knows exactly what I've got myself into. Um, there you go. No, no, okay. Um, so this website, it tells you basically what you need to do. So if you get stuck, you can always refer back to this website. Um, there are a few things you'll need to do when you um, start up. Um, and there's some forms and stuff you'll need to fill in. And I'll help you through that. I'll hold your hand until it's done. Um, you know, just ask Melissa. She knows just how much I'll hold your hand. Um, oh, don't you agree? No? Doesn't want to talk. Sorry, what was it? I said um, that I'll hold your hand to get you set up. That I'll be Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Like, um, I remember we were talking, like, just casual, so, uh, socially on, on Zoom, and I mentioned a Reef thing, and you get, went, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll fix that. Uh, okay, yeah, Brian, you're right. Yes, a reef can also um, help the steward be aware of the paperwork that is required. Absolutely, that is your job. Um, financial documents, uh, a little bit of constab as well. We need to be good friends with constab, with, uh, with constable and with the seneschal. If you're not like this with your seneschal, then you've got a problem and you probably can't see my hand. Um, so, um, anybody else got any questions before I move on? Probably got more of a comment and question about how how it is to sort of develop it as a reef because like um, the longer you're in the role, the more confident you get with how our various policies hang together, all of our or, you know the, the all the responsibilities, but also as Brian said you know, helping other parts of the group sort of function in the financial role. On day one, you're not going to understand that. That's, you know, that's not, you're not expected to. Um, but over time, you you will just become more comfortable with with all of the financial, you know, operations of the SCA. And you kind of just learn it. Um, and that's, you know, and by, by the time you, you've, you've gone through two years, you will be a real asset to the group. You'll help the group function much more smoothly, you'll be able to kind of, you know, chip in new discussion points during during meetings to sort of help events run more smoothly, help events get planned, help people do budgets, all that sort of stuff. It's a really, it's a really beneficial role for the group. Um, and that that literally just comes naturally with time. Yeah, that's that's a really good point, Bacchus. Nobody is expected to know it all when they start. Um, and uh, it, and I'm, it's probably one of the fears that people have is that you're gonna you expect to know all this stuff. No, we have resources. Myself, I'm a resource. The other reeves will talk to you. We've got a, a Facebook chat um, that you can ask questions on, and you will get answers. You'll either get one directly from me, or you might get one from the treasurer, as in the bod treasurer, or you might um, get one. Um, you know, from another reef. Um, but you'll get an answer and you'll and we'll help you out. Um, so there's information on um, king and levies, when you pay them, so uh, and how much you pay and what accounts you pay. So that information is all provided on this website. And um, now here's the important thing. I, I mentioned at, at the start, we don't have an active um, uh, handbook. So this is where we get our, this is where we draw our um, direction from. We've got policies. So in New Zealand, they have the financial policy and in Australia, we have the financial policy. So you guys will be interested in this document here. I'm not going to go into it. It's like a 30 odd page document, um, but that is where we get the yes you can do this no you can't do that and yes it is actually going to get reviewed soon in the top um that yeah so um 
that's information on what it takes to be a read. Um, I did say I'd talk about Zero and Dropbox. Um, so I'll, hang on, watch sharing for a second, go back. Uh, Dropbox, the, the Exchequer has a paid for Dropbox that the Kingdom pays for. And um, on that, all of the groups have folders. Actually, they most of them have two folders. They have an archive of past stuff and they have the current stuff um, because most um, groups don't pay for um, folders and once it gets over the two gigabyte limit, you know, we start having problems, so we archive it. Um, it is simple to drop documents on Dropbox. That's where we put the, um, the minutes, the sign-in sheets, um, the stuff that we can't upload or is not quite appropriate to upload to zero. Um, so you can put receipts there if you've got a dozen of them and it's just easier to put them in a folder than to try and upload a dozen receipts um, on a you know, single transaction, uh, which believe me or not, uh, can happen. Um, the, it's really, really, really simple. Um, I then check the folders every month and make sure that stuff is where it should be and we'll send reminders. And if I send you a reminder, if you get contacted, I'm not upset with you. I'm just like gently prodding going, hey, you, know, you haven't got any meeting minutes up for this month. You know, can you do something about that, please? You know, people forget, people have real life, real life comes first. Um, it's not my job to come and harangue anybody. I don't want to harangue anybody. Um, I know when I first joined the society, I was nervous of kingdom officers. Um, they actually scared me. Um, and I don't want anybody to be scared of me. Um, so I learned very quickly that you didn't need to be scared of kingdom officers because they're basically just volunteers that are doing a higher level job. Um, so that's Dropbox. Anyone got questions about Dropbox before I go on zero? Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, okay, I worked out on mute. So just an observation is um, so the way um, the, the meeting, so the, the meeting notes, so the, so the Dropbox is structured where you put in your monthly meeting minutes. And yeah. um, for a lot of the, you know, your, I guess your alpha baronies in the, in the kingdom, they, they, generally have religiously monthly meetings but a lot of the small groups they they don't have monthly meetings so it, it ha has a certain lack of you know it lacks a certain amount of meaning it becomes then a process which you know putting in a note like it's actually not hard to do but putting in a note there no meeting this month um becomes a bit of a tick box exercise so even just maybe having a note in there it does but the reason we're doing it um, is when we get audited by um, the Australian Taxation Office, um, for example, I'll send auditors to us and if they can, okay, we make it a special. Um, now, if an auditor comes back and goes, oh, you know, there's no meeting minutes here for Adora, why did Adora suddenly spend $1,200 um, I can't see where they got the approval to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a that's a big transaction. Um, and the meeting minutes are where that's recorded. It's like, okay, um, the Adoran um, group council met, it was unanimous, and we're going to buy a new tent for Adora so that, you know, we can outshine Rowan. Um, it, it makes it easier for the order. A lot of things we're doing is um, because it is a legal requirement, um, but not everybody understands the legal requirement yeah. of why we're doing it, which is what I'm trying to explain here. Yeah, and that's, that's, that is part of it. Is, does uh, that, make it, that make it clearer? 
Oh, a little bit, yeah. And, and you know, my background for the last 10 years has been local government, so I understand, you know, yeah. the processes. Which we, a lot we, of people don't necessarily understand, you know, what, what, yeah. what, um, so pure explanation at times can be helpful. Yeah, um, we get... Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, absolutely. Um, uh, any minutes that, that, a, that a group does have, yeah, they, they should be uploaded. Um, uh, one of my observations that for smaller groups, they might, yeah. you know, a quarter no, of might be enough. Um, so it, it, all it needs is you have one file on there, months we didn't have a meeting, and then you just add to it January, December, whatever months you didn't meet. Mm. That's fine. It's it's just so that the auditors see that we're not missing minutes. It's just we didn't have a meeting. Um, but, you know, and we do get audited, and they do ask us. I don't know if Bacchus has ever seen it, but the auditors send us this huge list of questions. And if we don't have good answers, they can then find us. Um, and if we're really unhappy, they can shut us down. Now, there was a point one um, several years back, and I'm not quite sure, I think it's roughly why we went to zero when they went, uh, yeah, you guys are very close to being shut down um, as a financial group. And that's why stuff happened. Bacchus might know better than I. But yeah, he's not in. Yeah. yeah. If anyone remembers the spreadsheets we used to use for, for re reconciling transactions way back in like the late 20, 2000s, early 2010s, um, they were they were exactly what we needed as an organisation for our own purposes, but they were not in any sense auditable. And uh, when the auditor first came along, like we breached the threshold, and then we got the auditor's attention, um, and they qualified us. And, you know, qualification is, is quite concerning um, and has the potential to to see us shut down or otherwise penalised. And then that happened two years in a row because the second year was still relying on information from the first, so had all the same problems. Um, and I, I think that might have been the last time we got a qualification, which means we're on a, on a bit of a roll now, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, we haven't had a qualification. We've been late a few times and been fined for being late, but we haven't had a qualification. Yeah, so that, and that's awesome. And that's we, we want to keep that up. That's a really, really good thing. That's, that, that is why we have the current financial policy that we have and why I am so stringent on these rules. Because I actually remember it. I was a read at the time. Yeah, that's that's right, Arabella. Yeah, our reads are doing a fantastic job. Um, I am really proud of all of my reads. Um, I try to pass it on. I think giving positive feedback is um, important. I always try to see up my reads. Not sure if I'm doing a good job, but I'm trying. Um, so, uh, zero. Zero is the accounting package that we went to after that debacle. Um, and it is really easy. Most groups, most, uh, actually, yeah, we only have one group that's active that doesn't use Westpac in Australia, uh, and that's uh, Burnfield. The other one that was doing it was Whitewood, and they're just going to be um, So those are the only two groups that don't have Westpac. Um, so we have, we have, people get an account with Westpac, they get put on as signatures, um, that's all internet banking, um, it's, it's simple, you sign in, you put in the account numbers, um, uh, another person with approval rights comes in, approves it, there's a transaction. Um, and then all of this is recorded and sent to zero. So they get a dump every day or thereabouts and um, they get updated and you get um, what we call uh, unreconciled transactions. So then what you do is you go into zero, you go through the transaction, you say, okay, um, this transaction was for this and it has this account code and um and you put in the details you um you fill that in and we've got some we've got some 
prior to being able to do that, then Bacchus um, helped us update those um, earlier in the year. Um, and it's that simple. That's that's how you that's how you do the transaction. The reconciling is the big thing that we need to have done um, every month. And the reason we do it every month is because if you get to the end of the quarter and you haven't reconciled, you're sitting there and you're going, "What the hell is this hundred and fifty dollars here for?" And you're racking your brain, and it takes three times as long because you don't have the information in your head. Anymore. Um, so we, we reconcile often, um, and if you get stuck, we're always here. Um, I am more than happy to answer any zero questions. I, I don't, I wouldn't say I know zero like the back of my hand, but I know how to do everything we need to do on zero. And if I don't, I know where to get the answers for. Um, so yeah, you, you'll have support. Um, any questions? Oh, that zero does a heap of report. Um, you can you can open up zero and you can uh, zero in like uh, on your finances. You can see trends. You can um, you can do profit and loss statements. Um, uh, and zero is the tool that we at Kingdom use to go. All right, you've uh, you've had an event, um, fields of gold. We had 100 people turn up. It was a two-day event. Uh, you now owe us $200 in Kingdom Levies. We had um, three non-members, the two adults, and one um, minor. Um, so you owe us uh, $25 in uh, event um, insurance. And uh, you know it's the end of the quarter. And this is what you owe us for GST. That's how Lara and I, we go through, we run reports. It's all come from data you put in zero. So, but it's not hard. So does anyone have any questions about zero? Can I make a plug? Yeah, you're okay. You're okay. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll get back to you, Marcus. Yeah, so not a question, but an observation. Um, so, and for those, you know, um, I stepped down from Reeve about, I can't remember, it was 12 months ago or something like that, and yeah. Brian um, took it on. Brian, Brian was Reeve before me, and I was a rubbish student when it came to handover. Um, Brian's doing a great job. He is doing a great job. So I was there for three years. We deliberately did that to get the Reeve handover and Seneschal handover out of phase. Yeah. Um, but one of the observations with zero is, that, as I said, I was a rubbish student in terms of the handover, yeah. but um, it's actually a really good system for someone oh, who can you. sit down and learn as you go. Emma, I'm uh, just going to let you know we are reporting this. You're right. Got that. Sorry, yeah. Sorry Jochen. Keep going. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so I, I found it's it's really good system. So different people learn in different ways. And for me, playing around in the engine and trying to nut it out as I go works for me personally. And I found that zero yeah. was really good for that style of learning. Yeah. So zero, zero also has a very good uh, a good help um, website with video tutorials as well. Um, and it's, I, it's forgiving. If you stuff something up, you can generally go back and unreconcile and re-reconcile or alter your reconcile. And, and it also gives you a warning if you're going to do something dramatic. Like, are you sure you really want to do this? Yeah. It won't let you reconcile something if the figures don't add up. But I think you get about a 15 cents leeway. I think they'll allow rounding to about 15 cents and that's it. Um, but uh, generally everything adds up, but occasionally when you're dealing with um, square fees and you're like, no, oh, that doesn't matter. Um, but um, as a as an exec, I like everything to add up and make sense. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so Zero has been really easy for me to use. I've loved it. Um, uh, the, the first time I was read was like when Bacchus was explaining, um, we had these spreadsheets and um, it was open to uh, some nefarious people doing some not so good things. And um, 
zero kind of doesn't allow that because everything is accounted for um, on online. Transactions don't add up then. So anyway, back is you were going to say something. Uh, uh, we were you were talking about the zero um, guides a little while ago. Um, I would encourage folk who haven't seen them to go to go and have a look at them. Um, don't feel the need to read them um, unless there's they're of particular interest. But know know what's in there basically. Um, yeah, you'll find the ones that Bax and I worked on in uh, the Dropbox when you get access. Uh, there's a zero folder and there's a, a guide um, guides in there. Yeah, and they just. Yeah, go on. I just the, the, the names of them will tell you the sort of thing they target at. And so it's the kind of thing that if you know they're there, when the time comes to do a cash advance, now you know, you, you can find out how to run through a cash advance. There's some yeah. sort of gotchas in there. That, that document will help you. Cash yeah. advances are not easy things. They're about the only tricky thing. And I'm more than happy to answer questions on that at the time you're doing it because um, they're, they're somewhat complicated beasts and kind of individual. Um, is this, can I ask a question? Is um, so is that a online program we log into, or is it something we download? Zero. Yes. It's uh, it's it's a uh, website based program. Okay, all right. Uh, so as long as you have a website, I have managed to run it off my mobile phone, um, though not very well. Um, uh, off my laptop, um. I, I've run it off Linux, I've run it off Windows, I'm assuming it will work on Mac. Okay. Um, it's pretty robust. Right, good, thank you. Uh, okay. I, I always used it on a Mac, yeah. Yeah, there you go, Emma, Emma used it on a Mac. Emma was my read and stow before uh, Shinjo Takami, she did a fabulous job. Um, so I'll get I, login details when I step up in February? You will get login details. Actually, uh, I'd happily give you login details now if you sign a um, a company. Okay, all right. Um, so if you want to, I, I can show you where the, there's links for those on the website I showed earlier, or if you email me, I'll send you the form. And once you filled it out, um, I will then give as the deputy. Um, okay, we'll do. The Okay, emails. Okay, if we if nobody's got any other questions about drop uh, Dropbox or Zero or anything we've covered so far, just here's your opportunity. Okay, emails. You have an official email, um, and uh, when you sign your warrant um, on registry, there is an opportunity for you to direct that email to your personal email address. Um, so each group has an official one. I made sure it was all set up. Um, so all of, all of those email addresses will be on the official mailing list. I will email those. I, I will, important information gets emailed. Um, not so important information, but nice to know um, is generally put on Facebook. Uh, so there is a Facebook community. You don't have to be on Facebook. You do have to be on the email. Um, and then quite often I'll put your personal one on there as well, just in case. I'll normally send to both your emails, just in case, but because uh, uh, sometimes we've had problems with emails uh, not being where they should be. So I'm working to improve that after past um but generally if you get stuck contact me uh, if you can't get me on email which you, i'd be surprised if you can't because i'm fairly responsive um you can get me on facebook um all right backers do you want to talk about the um handbook sure uh so Right at the start, we mentioned that we don't have a handbook in place at the moment and that we haven't for a very, very long time, if ever. Um, those of you who've been reads in the past might remember there was a it was a, a wiki from back in probably again the late late 2000s 
um, and that was a draft handbook for a long time. Um, but uh, it basically missed out on a whole bunch of stuff that that we picked up when we shifted over to Zero and, and Dropbox. So, um, so uh, there has been a project going for some time now to write an actual handbook that will hopefully help you do your jobs. Um, and that project is nearing completion. Basically, um, it's uh, the the documents essentially written. There are a few kind of last little bits and pieces that are getting ironed out, and we need a little bit of feedback from a few important people in the kingdom. Um, and once we've done that, it'll basically be a draft for release. Uh, and at that point, um, you know, exactly how we how we play this out is, is kind of still up for discussion, um, but it'll probably be something like we'll get a few experience reads and possibly some a few new reads to pick it up and sort of see how, how they run with it. Um, so the experience reads will kind of be looking at it with an eye to does this match what I do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, and the new readers will be looking at it to say, can I actually understand this? You know, is this useful for me? Um, and so we want, we want, you know, as much feedback as, as you're able to give. Um, what I will say to be very clear, this will be a big document and it's not something that anyone needs to know of by heart. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, it, you know, as we're writing it, we, we don't know this information off by heart. We're going and pulling it from various other places. So don't feel the need to be you know, deeply familiar with it. But again, it's a resource. It's the idea that um, when you have a, some, a question that comes up or a gap in what you're trying to do, it's a, it's a, a big sort of master document that can help you answer those questions for you. Um, in terms of timing, um, I would hope, and I'm, you know, I've never committed to something in a public forum like this um, on this document, but I'm committing now and that's terrifying. Um, I am hopeful that we will have something out by you know early 2022 for uh, for people to start consuming. So it may not be yeah. early, but February might be might be feasible. We're, we're, we've got to a point where we just need feedback from key people. Once we've got that feedback from the key people and back into say a few minor changes, then we'll put it out as a draft document. We've been wanting to put it out for draft document, but we're just not quite comfortable yet to put it out as a draft document. But to give you an idea of how long this has been in the works, Bacchus started it when Bacchus was Exchequer. Um, and so we had Bacchus, then we had Kamara, then we had Sorrel, and now we have me. So four Exchequers later, and I'm hoping to get this project. And it's uh, it will be it will be a good thing to be out and published, and it'll be off all of our collective backs. <laughs> yeah, uh, a, a huge huge thanks to Bacchus. He's done so much work on it. It's actually mostly, um, but yeah. Um, I thanks to Thorold and to Mara as well because they did. Um, all right. I'm going to open up. Anybody got any other questions? Anything I haven't covered? Anything you think should be covered? Please. Receipts. Receipts. Yes. Go. What are you, what are you thinking about with receipts? Well, um, for some reason, I I thought that you know you're spending money on behalf of like an organization is that you, you know you naturally keep your receipts. Absolutely. And and the thing is that not everybody knows that really. Um, and the thing is, if you don't keep your receipts, you can't get your money back because if you've got you run, you're buying something on behalf of your group or you're running an event, we don't want you to be out of pocket. Yeah, so there is a way around that if you don't have a receipt, but it's kind of frowned upon. And if it ever happens, I need to be informed straight away. Uh, it's called a statutory, statutory declaration. Uh, if you fill one out and get it signed by a JP. Um, it is more of a receipt, you know, this is what happens. Sometimes that's required. But yes, uh, anybody who's spending money, it should have a receipt. Now, there are a couple of examples where you don't need a receipt. Uh, and that is if you've got an ongoing contract, say um, you're paying rent at a hall and you always pay rent at the hall and it's always a set amount don't need a receipt for that because it's quite clear you can see where the money is going and why. Um, but um, if somebody goes out and buys, you know, a uh, hundred candles, a hundred tea lights 
and um, some sources to put the tea lights in, and then they've lost the receipt. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be a problem. And the other fun one is uh, when they come in, they give you a receipt with two with two things on you and another twenty things for them. Um, these are these are situations you want to avoid. And what you need to do is, it was mentioned earlier, I think um, uh, mentioned by a couple of people that you need to talk to your um, steward, to talk to your senator, to talk to your group, and tell them this is what you need. You're going to be the conduit for financial information. But here's the thing. Kind of scary stepping up and you're not going to know all this information so this is why we have a team and you ask questions if you get stuck and you're not sure and you're like this has just happened come talk to me come talk to other reads i'm not going to jump on you i'm going to try and help you my job is to help you um uh yeah we it, uh that's right Bacchus. Uh, if they, if somebody gives a uh, stat deck, um, it means generally means we can't claim GST back. So there is a financial impost on um, the society. Um, but if it's just a small amount, we don't worry about it. If it starts to be a big amount, that's when it gets goes beyond me, and it has to be raised with the um, with the vice president. But we don't want to go there, so please just tell your tell your senator, tell your steward, beast of crap, um, that you need receipts. They should know this. It's fairly standard accounting practice, mm -hmm. but you'd be surprised. There's also um uh if a fairly big purchases um a uh, a vendor can invoice the reeve directly. And the reeve directly pays, not the steward. Yes, that can be done. But the other thing is big purchases, and I didn't think about this. Um, you need big purchases. You need to get anything. I think it's over a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. I have to check that. Uh, you need bot approval. If you're going to make a purchase, you need bot approval. Um, and yeah, that's uh, sorry. Answer. You need whose approval? Oh, uh, the the um board of directors. Yeah, board of directors. Sorry, yeah, I was stuck there for, I, for, that, for a second. Because I I know in Stowe we had a policy that anything over three hundred dollars needed a quorum approval of Stowe executives, but that should then also, if that's higher, that should also go up. Um. Basically, any financial um, transaction should be approved in some way, shape, or form by your council. Yeah. You should, not be so, spending, you should not be spending a single cent without approval from your council. Um, uh, now, this can be done one of several ways. Uh, one off transaction, you get approval for the one transaction. A big event, you approve a budget. And as long as it's in the budget, then that's approved. Um, and, and any variance in the budget then needs to be um, further uh, um, further approved. Um, there are other things where you might have a standing thing uh, where you hate saying the reed can spend $100 a quarter. And as long as the reed doesn't go over the $100 a quarter, um, then that's fine. But all financial approval only lasts for one year. So come back to the end of the year, you need to get that approval redone with an ongoing thing. Now, this is also for where we get our income from. You need to get your incomes approved in the same way and for the same period of time. Um, because uh, how we get our income and um, and that is just as important as how we spend our money. Um, and I just remembered something else that's really important. 
A donation is a donation is a donation. It cannot be something you make somebody pay. Um, just, yeah. Any other question, point? Yeah. Electronic hand up. Um, God. Um, just uh, with receipts. Um, yeah. So um, I... Um, I've run run the odd event here and there, and certainly a lot more. Uh, you know, had run a number of events before I was a reeve. Um, a part of it is is education of the steward and the stewarding team. So one of the things that I'm looking for with people being involved in my you know, in a stewarding team is, uh, you know, can they? But you know, can they look after receipts? And what you know, one of my blanket rules is. As soon as you make a purchase, you take a photograph of it and you send it through. I actually have something well, better than that. That's a great um, idea, actually. Yeah. I have something better than that. It's uh, an app you can have. You've got a smartphone called Genius Scan, and it will automatically it convert, uh, co uh, convert a photo on your phone into a PDF that's that excellent. you can email. Yeah, that's excellent. But um, failing that program, a photo of a receipt is a valid. Right. Um, Thing. And and the reason I do that is because you know you, you get to the end of that feast it's eleven thirty at night twelve thirty yeah it's and someone says oh yes that's right I've got this one receipt here and um, that I forgot to give you earlier um, it is so easy for that to get mislaid or as but you know anyone who's done been reeve well maybe not anyone but some reeves have probably had the experience where they get a great big wadger of paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've run the event, and here's a whole bunch of stuff. There's not some things missing. Can you sort it out? That's not fun. Um, yeah, it's, uh, a, it's it's hurting cats. That's the hardest part of the job. It's like you're hurting your other officer. Hmm. Um, it's, People it's, do that because um, I I have to do the financials for my event, and um, I don't see um, sorting out all my receipts as the raise job. Um, uh, it happens. <laughs> no, it, it shouldn't be, but it falls to the reeve to uh, if it isn't done, then it's the reeve's responsibility. Yeah, um, I can... but it should be a combined job, right? Like, it, it should be a combined job. It, in theory, all of the officers should be working like this, hand in glove, together in a perfect world. But, yeah, we all know we don't live in a perfect world, so that's why you need to train your officers so that you get a perfect um, Okay, while we're on uh, taking money and receipts and stuff, taking money. All right, receiving money to the bank account, giving out the bank details, that's fine. Reeve can do that. It is frowned upon, not outlawed, but it is frowned upon, for a read to actually be the gatekeeper taking physical cash because they're supposed to be the ones checking that off. If that ever has to happen, you need to get a third party to check off your work. And it's something we don't really want you to do, but if it does happen, you need to get somebody else and preferably an officer to countersign your work. You couldn't um, you, it, it, it is sort of you, you are in charge of the money, but you when um, and 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 a uh, a reeve running gate is good, but when it comes to receiving physical cash, fairly wipe you to draw the line. Or um, you uh, a lot of events now we're saying we're taking no cash at the gate. Uh, unfortunately, you can't say that. Uh, it's legal tender. You have to say that. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I know when you were at the door at Yule, we we said we prefer not to take cash. Uh we yeah, we managed to talk the person out of giving me cash, but if he wasn't able to do a bank transfer, then we would have taken a 40 year And then I would have but because I was the exchequer and not the reeve, I would have gotten something off the counter sign anyway. Um, uh, but you know, it was not a comfortable situation for me at that point either. What's the situation on the booking officer of an event being the reeve? 
I think a uh, Reeves makes a perfect booking officer because you can check on um, zero or on um, on the bank accounts whether the money's come through. Um, like the the Reeve needs to work hand in glove with a booking officer because they need to know about the financial transactions. Otherwise, you're sitting there going, well, we just got $300 from Hart Henley. Who the hell is Hart Henley? Oh, wait, yeah, she's the landed baroness of, you know, Craig Glass, and she's paying for, you know, um, 20 by the sea in Adora. Fruit, fruit. Mm. There you go, Jochen. Yeah, we have. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll take the spookification. <laughs> Yeah, for you, we had uh, a, the booking sheet was a Google sheet and I... Um, yeah, that uh, worked well. Yeah, and, and I gave the Reeve access to it and she was able to update the transactions. That's how, that's how we sort of did it. The steward would, as mm -hmm. the steward would link me in as Reeve and the booking officer and then we'd all be able to contribute it and I would have columns of being able to double check that yes it's gone into the bank account and etc and then um, right. I, I, and we're able to follow up as in who was this person who paid the most vital skill a Reeve has is the ability to communicate um a lot of issues will be resolved or avoided with good communication. Um, the the read needs to know what's going on with every event financially. They need to understand, they need to be the one, or their deputy needs to be the one holding the budget um, and at least understanding where that is because they then have to reconcile it in zero and it's it's one of those things you are the gatekeeper of the finances and if you're not happy you just don't do it which is why they need to give you the information so you can be happy but it shouldn't be hard we've we've trained people it's um it, the 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 situation has improved um, dramatically from when I was the first to read 10 years ago to now. I, I guarantee you we are miles better. Um, I, I also agree yeah, with yeah. that. Bookings, bookings and payment prior to the event um, is, is a good one. Um, sorry, uh, Brian, I agree with that. Um, and and that really uh, that really is a way we can do it. That way you don't get um, cash transactions. But if you're allowing payments at the gates, then you have to allow cash. But yeah, so that is a way around it. Thank you, Brian. Hey, okay, anybody else got anything else? Back as you happy. Oh, yeah, go on. If we do have to take cash at the gate or something, do we have to issue receipts or is that what the booking sheet? Okay, receipts, yes. Um, we should be issuing receipts for anything over a set amount, and I can't remember what that is. I'll need to look that up and get back to you. Um, but if it's over, if it's a significant amount of money, then we absolutely should be giving them a receipt. If anybody ever asks you for a receipt, you must provide a receipt. Now, the receipt needs to have our ABN, our um, the, the amount of money paid, why it was being paid, who it's being paid to, so the Society for Creative Anachronism, whatever group you are, um, and the date. That's all the receipt needs. Do um, all groups have a stamp with some of those things on them? No, but it's a good idea to get a stamp. It will save you a lot of hassle. No, it, you're right, uh, Brian. It doesn't have to be issued on the spot. You can go back, create one on the computer, and then send it out via an email. It just has to be issued. 
uh, within a reasonable time frame. Now, I don't know what a reasonable time frame is. Oh, friends went to banking. Banking is done as soon as is possible. Um, we don't like money in cash being left unbanked for a period of time. Um, the The idea is you bank it within three business days of receiving it. Um, now, if that's not possible within the week, if you go outside of the week, I need to be informed as a checker. Because, um, yeah, go on. Can you send someone to the bank for you if you are unable to go before yeah, it? Yeah, you don't have to be the one doing the banking. You can delegate. Um, you can delegate somebody. It just has to be banked. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's an event for any cash needs to be banked. Um, it's also, it should not be, and this is unfortunately, it's a breach of financial policy. You cannot go, oh, I'm going to keep the cash. Or I'm going to do a bank transfer to our account. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to do that. It's um, called commingling of funds. Um, there is a push to relax that, but at the moment that hasn't been relaxed. Um, so back onto the tax receipts. Yeah, there are tax valid receipts and there's um, non uh, uh, and, and non tax valid receipts. So if you know the GST, um, you can put the GST in, but uh, we don't, not required to, um, as far as I, I, I'm not, not entirely sure. If you just say there was no DSP, then we're not charging DSP. Um, that's my understanding. If somebody knows better, then sure, correct me, because I'm not entirely certain. All right, anybody else? Just that my experience being read for a very small group with yeah. limited number of peoples was that getting the weekly hall donations to the bank within three days and not being able to comb. It was one of the struggles I had. Yeah. Because, and, because and, getting to the bank um, during working hours would take over an hour which I yeah and so long. that's why you delegate it to somebody who can do it easily or um if you really get stuck then you talk to me send me an email i'll go look i'm not gonna be able to do it for two weeks this is the situation i'll go yeah that's fine yeah yeah because yeah, the bank shuts at four o'clock yeah banking hours are not nice um some banks are nice so i'm not really sure what best page banking hours are um uh we have in borders cross we have one person who generally does all of our banking because it's just um and she's been doing it for years but um it is one of those tricky requirements but again if things don't go right just talk to me and we'll work it out we, we're here to support you. We're not here to crack down on you. We're not going to jump, like, we're not going to dump a bag of bricks on you from a great height. Because we're all volunteers and we all need to help each other or else, you know, the society's going to fall apart. Um, I want to be there for my reads. So, yeah, as I said at the beginning, if I am only going to impart one bit of information that sticks in your head is that you will have support as a read. I will be there. I will support you. The other reads will support you. My deputy will support you. Um, and, you know, my successor will support you because it's what we do. All right, anybody else? Just one one comment, closing comment on uh, on the uh, the asking for assistance is um, 
but you know, don't don't feel that it's something particularly problematic, but you just need to kind of grin and bear it. Um, so as Gabby was saying, you know, if you sort of speak up, there might be ways to work around some of the issues that, that you come across, but even just, you know, the extra can knowing that you've got these specific issues can help us sort of reform how we how we how we run our things and where those sort of pinch points are. Um, you know, the, the, everyone here wants to make the job of the reader as, as easy and smooth as possible. Um, and so knowing where there are kind of hiccups happening and particularly whether those things are happening sort of broadly is, is a, a, an important way of improving processes down the line. My two cents. No, that's, that's really, really important, Bacchus. Thank you. Um, and, you know, Bacchus has had experience as Exchequer. I'm sure he's been a read as well. Um, I've been a Reeve twice and I've been working at Kingman level now for about four years. Um, feels like a lifetime. Um, yeah, the, we have, we have programs, um, that will help make it easier. We're there to help you. It's not that big a scary thing. Don't have to be a maths genius. Um, it does help to be able to count and add up, but more than being able to count and add up, it's it's only only for small amounts. Most of it is done for you. You just have to know where to put the figures in and how to put the figures in. And we've got forms on how to do that in zero. Um, and if you ever get stuck, you just come and you ask. Because we are here to help. Uh, I think. Um, I, yeah, go on, Emma. I I just wanted to say about the the handbook and that sort of thing. I mean, um, I know I'm not Reeve anymore, but having access or or and the Seneschal having access to those sorts of things could be really good. I, I'm terrified Melissa's going to ask me a question and I'm basically going to say, I don't know, it may have all changed. I think we've got to go and find out. Actually, you're, um, you're lucky. Melissa's really good friends with me. She's more likely to ask me the question. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> also, I, I worked for uh, about five years in an accounting office, so um, I'll, I'll, it's not really about where's the box. It's like, which box does it go in? Yeah. yeah. But, but being able to help the questions or, or, you know, even with somebody organizing an event, knowing what's possible and having access to documentation that can give you guys. And when I say I will, when I say I will bend over backwards to help, I will hand out my phone number to you and I will have a an hour, two hour conversation just to sort out the problem. Now, I don't think I have anybody here that I've done that with. So uh, I know Melissa has my number. Uh, I know Tom has my number. Um, you know, Bacchus has got my number, but he's my deputy. I'm not really worried about it. Mm. Sorry, Bacchus. Mm. Um, yeah, so I think that's, uh, I think that's everything, unless, unless someone's got anything else, I, I think, I think that's, did, did you find that helpful? Was that useful? Was there useful information there for people? Yep. It was, was useful, yes. Um, just one observation I might have is, so with some of the things that should be done, um, particularly in Dropbox, you know, things like meeting minutes, ensuring that um, sign-in sheets and so on are there. It oh, yeah. seems have, uh, the same, uh, the, um, it has become the role of the Exchequer and the Reeves to make sure all these things have happened. And in yeah. my mind, some of these things at least actually should be falling on other offices. Yeah, so, and I had a discussion with our, um, King and Ponstad about this exact question. Um, and the answer I think I saw is, you having that conversation. <laughs> yeah, I think you did. But um, 
the answer is it's the Reeves' responsibility to, to make sure it ends up on the Dropbox. And the constab needs to make sure that the forms are available, but it is not the constab's job to put them on Dropbox, but the constab can be deputized to do that. Can be not always going to be. So that's the answer. Does that make it clear? Yeah, it makes it clear. I, I don't know if I agree with it, though, um, to be honest. So how, would, how, would, how would you like to do it? And just like tell me, and we'll, and we'll see if we can do it. Yeah. Um, so in, and you know, in my mind, and this is you know definitely going into the realm of my personal observations and opinions. Um, meeting minutes should be Senegal's responsibility to ensure that they're recorded and put where they should be. Yeah. Um, Sign-in sheets should be the constable's responsibility for to ensure that they're recorded and put where they should where they need to be. And the event report um, should be the steward's responsibility. Sorry. And the event report should be the steward's responsibility. Yep. Yeah, no, you're, you're preaching to the choir, but unfortunately, we have to hurt cats. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with you totally, but we're hurting cats. Yeah, one of, the, all, yeah. one of the things I found with our sign in sheets, the Reeve had to sign the sign in sheets, and the constable had to witness. Oh, yep. we had yep, a yep. A yep. dual signature between the Reeve and the, the constable yeah, yeah. signing in. And so at that point, I just used to say, I'll take them now that they've been yeah. double signed. And then I just used to take them home and scan them and keep them with all my other paperwork. And we'll find that the constab does need the signing information for their report, um, but uh, we also need it. So you may need to make sure they have access to it. That's been the problem in the past and work. I know it was a problem in Borders Cross briefly. Um, so, yeah. Communication. It's the, the, the hardest part of your job is communicating with your other officers. Quite frankly, um, that's the hardest part. Now, some of us are blessed with beautiful officers that help us, and some of us not so blessed. And when you're not so blessed, I'm here to support you. I will talk to those other officers on your behalf if that becomes needed. I'd much rather we not get to that point, but I will back up my reads. I am here to support you guys. I will back you to the hilt. Um, as long as you guys are doing your job, you know, how I'm asking it to, then I will back you. And even if you're not, I'm still going to try and help you. Mm. All right. Um, I, think, I think some of us want to run after the stow dessert. Oh, the stow dessert. Yeah, as a stone meet, as a stone meet up for dessert, it's like it started um, at eight o'clock. Oh, well, I'm I'm I think I'm going to stop recording now, and I'm happily chat with anybody who wants to stay on for a little bit. But uh, I think that's the meeting. Um, thank you all for coming. I hope it was useful. All right, I'm stopping recording now. <laughs>